Thank you all so much. And we'd like to welcome you here today on behalf of the governor and all of his staff uh, to make the announcement for some of the ready projects that we've all been working so diligently on. It's great to be here with all of you today. And I wanted to uh, begin by thanking a, a few special guests. I'd like to start with welcome, welcome, welcoming the city of Niagara Falls Mayor, Paul Deister. <laughs> and my colleagues, Town of Wilson Supervisor, Doyle Phillips. <laughs> Village of Wilson Mayor, Art Lawson. <laughs> Town of Lewiston Supervisor, Steve Broderick. <laughs> which was, uh, Steve was my guiding light getting up the steps that Adam said it was uh, only a couple. <laughs> and Town of Somerset Supervisor Dan Enger. <laughs> Kendall Supervisor Tony Camerata. <laughs> Carlton Supervisor Gail Ashbury. <laughs> and all of the county legislators that are here today. I would also like to thank Governor Cuomo for joining us today and his leadership in forming the Lake Ontario Ready Commission. When our area was devastated by the flooding of Lake Ontario, Governor Cuomo was the first one to step up to offer support and resources for our community. Every step of the way, the governor has encouraged our local leaders to work with state government to create a comprehensive plan to build our community back stronger than they, they were before. And Governor Cuomo didn't just have a vision to rebuild Lake Ontario shoreline. He had a plan to see it through. And, uh, and, and from the communities along the lake, we couldn't have appreciated that more. This was a bottom-up collaborative process and as a member of the local planning committee, the governor asked us to identify the greatest areas of need and deal with the often difficult trade-offs. But we did it, and we did it quickly. And I am thankful to the individuals on my local planning committee, to the Ready Commission, and to Governor Cuomo. I am proud to stand alongside of all of you today as we announce meaningful solutions that will increase community resiliency and protect the environment. And I thank him for his ongoing support for Newfane, Niagara County, and all of the communities along the Lake Ontario shoreline. Now this isn't in my script, but this is a man that I've personally met only three times. In them three times, I feel as though we have become pretty good friends. And I would like to welcome 56th Governor of the Great State of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you, thank you very much. First to Supervisor Horenberg. It's my pleasure to be back. Supervisor's working on some work with his back, but I want you to know it doesn't slow him down at all. I came up, he showed me everything he wanted me to see. We climbed down sewer pipes, we climbed over berms, we went down to the marina, we went out on boats. Uh, he was uh, phenomenal in uh, the middle of the storm when the water was really coming over the banks and it was a test of character and leadership. The supervisor was there 100%. Let's give him a big round of applause. Pleasure to be with uh, Orleans County Chair Lynn Johnson. Thank you, Lynn, very much for all your good work. Let's give her a round of applause. 
We have the uh, team from the state that has done great work on this. You're gonna hear from the DEC Commissioner Basil Sagos in a moment. Our Parks Commissioner Eric Kulaside uh, worked with this region, went to all the regional economic development meetings. He did a great job. Uh, Simonita Sabotic in my office uh, worked on it. And uh, all the members of the community who, who went to those regional economic development initiative meetings and worked on the resiliency plan and came out again and again and again and went through the process. So let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> And we have my colleagues from Albany. We have Assemblymember Morinello and Assemblymember Michael Norris and Senator Robert Ort. Thank you very much. Thank you for the help. This is a major effort on behalf of the state. It's a lot of money that we're talking about. Uh, and I couldn't get it done without their help in the Assembly and the Senate. I also want to thank Senator Ort, who has uh, been very aggressive in fighting for uh, the people along Lake Ontario and has really stepped up against the IJC and has done a great job. So thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. We also have Eric Gertler here, who's from uh, the Empire State Development Corporation. He's very important because he writes the check, so give him a very big round of applause. Let me say this. Uh, Lake Ontario, uh, we have major issues, and it is of major consequence to the state of New York. Lake Ontario, 500 miles of shoreline. You look at the map, it's the entire northern coast, uh, just about, of New York. 1.5 million people live along Lake Ontario. We have eight counties along Lake Ontario. Uh, the flooding of Lake Ontario has major quant consequences, not for just for the immediate homeowners and businesses, but for the entire state. It affects tourism dramatically, which is a major engine for us. Uh, it's affecting tens of thousands of homeowners. It's hurting local businesses. It has major potential negative consequences for the economy in the entire region. So it is a major situation. Uh, and everybody has lived through the past few years. 2017, we have a major flood, uh, 248 feet. They tell me it's a once in 500 year flood. So we come up, we did what we had to do on an emergency basis. We spent tens of millions of dollars. National Guard sent out a uh, whole emergency response team working with the local response teams, pumps, trucks, uh, personnel for weeks. We spend millions on the emergency response and then we spend about $120 million rebuilding after the damage of 2017. Uh, literally 120 million just in state funds that's without local governments, and that's without what the private owners had to pay to fix their homes and fix their businesses. But it was a once in a 500 year flood, so it'll never happen again. So uh, we handled it, and then once in 500 years, I probably won't have to worry about it again, 500 years, leave it to my great-great-grandchildren. Yeah, but it wasn't once in 500 years. We then come back two years later, and the flood is actually higher than it was in 2017. Flood water is higher. And they say, oh, this is the second in 500 year floods. No, math doesn't work that way. Math doesn't work that way. And we go through the same emergency drill that we went through, uh, replicating what we had done two years before again spending tens of millions of dollars on an emergency basis to fix this second in 500 year floods. And people go through the same disruption and businesses go through the same disruption and we have all sorts of loss to the economy. We tried our best to supplement it. We ran special tourism ads. 
Uh, Eric Kulisides, the park commissioner, ran special promotions for state parks to get people to come. And I think we did a good job alleviating the potential damage uh, from people getting nervous about the flood. But it was a major consequence to the state and to the local governments and to the people who live here. Uh, now, the IJC gets involved because the IJC's job is to manage the flow. That is their job, right? Manage the flow. We recently announced that we are suing the IJC. Uh, and this is a controversial decision. I am not a litigious person by nature. I'm a lawyer, but the last thing we want to do is sue. I understand the pressures on all sides. Uh, we're not blaming the IJC for the level of water. But the IJC has many factors that they're weighing. They're weighing commercial shipping and how much water they should have for commercial shipping. They're weighing what geographic locale uh, has the additional burden. Is it Canada? Is it St. Lawrence? Is it New York? They're weighing that. So they're weighing a lot of factors, and their job is to balance those factors. And my point as the governor of New York is, we are getting more of the burden than is our fair share. That's my point with the IJC. I'm not saying that they're not climate change issues. I believe there are climate change issues. And I believe there is additional melt. And I believe there may be more snow. And there may be a faster melt. And I don't blame the IJC for not dealing with Mother Nature. I tried. I failed. But their job is to balance it. And New York should not have to bear this burden. We're now hundreds of millions of dollars. Major disruption. And if their job is to balance the need, they're not doing it. Because we're paying too high a price. And that's why we're suing the IJC to say, we're New York, and we matter too, and our shoreline matters, and our homeowners matter, and our businesses matter, and yes, balance all your needs, but we're going to defend the state of New York because that's who we are, and that's what we do, and I am proud of it. And I want to stand with you in doing that. Now, we also said, after they tell you we had two 500-year floods in two years, uh, let's assume that this is going to happen again. For us to say, well, we're just going to handle this as an emergency because don't worry, it's only every 500 years, that would be a fool's errand. We know this is a new normal. And it would be unwise to spend money just building back what was if you know you're building back only to be affected by the next high water. And I believe it's going to happen again. And I believe the intelligent operating assumption is to believe it's going to happen again. So then what do you do? Let's not build back what was. Let's build for the anticipation of higher water. And let's just adapt to this new reality. And rather than spend the money on filling holes in the dike, let's build a new dike. And let's make the kinds of changes we need to make to have a new resilient shorefront. And let's actually make those improvements. And that's what the Ready Program is all about, $300 million. Well, that's a lot of money. Yes, it's a lot of money. But I'd rather spend $300 million to stop the problem than spend $200 every two years to repair the damage from the problem. It's $300, but it's an investment, and it will actually save us money in the long run. And the way we managed the program was to say, look, we on the state side don't know the best projects to do. You know the best projects to do. So in this partnership, 
we want to be helpful, we want to finance, we want to provide the funds, but you tell us what the priority projects are. Because it's your community, you live there, you know what gets flooded. You know what the most important businesses are and the most important locations are. So you tell us. And we broke the shoreline into regions. Uh, and there are five regions. And I call you region one. Doesn't mean that you are the preeminent region. I don't want to get into trouble with the other regions. But the way we did the counting, you are region one. And we had a few rules on the uh, ready program. Total of it was 300 million. We then set aside 120 million dollars for individual homeowners, private homeowners. Priority for primary residences, uh, and then we'll get to secondary residences. But 120 million dollars set aside for that. 30 million dollars set aside for private businesses that were damaged where the community says that private business has an impact beyond just that business, but that's a business that's important to the local economy. So we set aside $30 million for that, and we set aside $15 million for a shoreline dredging project which everybody needs, because dredging is part of this solution for the entire shoreline, and we're going to do a major dredging program across the entire shoreline. <laughs> the, we started asking for a local match of 15% from the local community. Surprise, surprise, the local community said they didn't want to uh, make that 15% match. It was an undue hardship for them. I understand that. We dropped the 15% local matching fund down to 5%. It is important to me that the local communities put some money in just because, frankly, I want you to have skin in the game. When you say this is a priority, you know how I know it's a priority? When you're willing to put your money on the table also. So even if it's only 5%, it's my way of saying to Tim, oh, it's really a priority? Is it enough of a priority to put your money on the table? Or is it enough of a priority just for me to put my money on the table? So that's what the 5% does. Uh, and the 5% uh, isn't, isn't a, shouldn't be a local burden, but it does make sure that we're all in this together and that we all are invested in these projects and we're going to go. And then what we said is, uh, every county will receive, at a minimum, $15 million. So uh, your region has two counties, Niagara, Orleans, a uh, minimum for that region of $30 million. And then, depending on your projects and the number of projects and the intelligence of the projects, you could also be awarded more, but a minimum, your region would receive $30 million. Uh, I'm pleased to tell you that your community did a great job, smart projects, necessary projects, and while the minimum amount was $30 million, your region is going to receive $49 million. <laughs> Um, what's the light at the end of the tunnel? What's the light through the storm clouds? This is the light. We've gone through a lot of pain, and we've gone through a lot of hardship, uh, and a lot of uncertainty. People's homes are damaged, they're out of their home, what's going to happen? Government says it's going to help. What does that mean? Government says it's going to help. Uh, but. We then say, well, we're going to have to prepare because this is going to happen in the future. That's frightening and that generates anxiety. But the silver lining is this. This $300 million and this new orientation that we have to build for the future, that was true anyway. You look at the work we're going to do, 
this is work we should have been doing anyway. These are improvements that whether or not the flood happened, these are improvements that make homes better and communities better and the waterfront better and breakwaters better. So these are projects that we should have done anyway. And the coastline and the shoreline and your region is going to be better than it was before. Because we're not just building back. We are building back better. And they're going to be more modern and stronger and more resilient and more economically competitive than they were before. And the $300 million is the largest state investment in this region in history. In history. So the flood, yes. Frightening, inconvenient. The silver lining is your waterfront is going to be better than it has been in our lifetime. And that is a positive. You give us lemons, we make lemonade. You give us a storm, we're going to come back and build the waterfront for the next generation. And that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome GEC Commissioner Basil Sagos. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, this has been a, a real honor serving as Ready Commission co chair. Um, and I want to recognize the governor for this vision. And everything the governor just laid out really was his vision from the outset. And I remember exactly where I was when I first heard this. I had just had shoulder surgery, and I was up on the table uh, getting my shoulder moved around, and I got a phone call. And it was the governor, uh, with a few of us on the phone, and he said, We're going to do this. And I said, okay, so a couple of years later, we'll have a great shoreline. He said, and we'll be done by October. <laughs> and uh, he laid out the entire thing, and I hung up the phone, and I yelled for the doctor. Um, and, uh, and that's all she wrote. But um, this has been an incredible undertaking. I want to thank uh, all the commissioners, co-chairs, uh, but all the commissioners who have been involved in this uh, since day one, uh, in particular in this region here, Eric Kulisade. Uh, Eric's been doing a great job. Uh, all the staff involved and all the local officials, literally hundreds of people that have been a part of this. Um, and, it's, and it's incredible, over the three months of this project, uh, 526 miles of shoreline, the governor was directing an emergency response while we undertook the Ready Commission. Um, so to have that, and to have that uh, work out as it did and, it, and to be able to announce this today is, is really remarkable. This is, in my view, uh, really government at its finest. Um, so, Governor mentioned um, that this region is uh, receiving $49 million. That's uh, for 20 uh, major projects. Uh, each and every one of these projects is, uh, is significant and will do exactly what the Governor said, which is to improve resiliency and to boost, boost the region's economy. I'm going to walk through some of these projects uh, right now. So, in Olcott Harbor, Town of Newfane uh, is receiving uh, $15.7 million. And that's to uh, protect against storm surge, floodwater inundation, and to protect some of the, uh, uh, the critical assets down by the waterfront. So congratulations. <laughs> In the town of Wilson, Sunset Island, West Barrier Bar, $3.3 million to address damages to property, infrastructure, and habitat caused by barrier bar breaches. And these barrier bars are not only habitat, uh, but they are homes for, for individuals and, and critical that we do everything we can to make sure that you can access these properties. <laughs> and fundamental, fundamental to this entire vision uh, that the governor had was not just rebuilding with hard infrastructure, rebuilding as it was, but rebuilding better and embracing natural infrastructure. And you'll see a lot of these projects that we're talking about mix those two, tr traditional and natural infrastructure, really to provide long-term resiliency, and that's exactly what we're doing. The Village of Youngstown, here we are, uh, $2.1 million for water recreation and public water access downtown. 700 feet of shoreline protected, elevated with floating docks to ensure that the tourism economy is strong. Congratulations. <laughs> The 
again in the town of Olcott, uh, town of Newfane, Olcott Beach Berm. Uh, governor walked down to this beach as it was being uh, inundated. Uh, 1.8 million to create a permanent berm to protect uh, not just the beach itself, but also uh, the homes in that neighborhood. Congratulations. And then the YMCA, YMCA Camp Cannon, uh, $87,000 to, pre to prevent erosion along the shoreline there. And you can see some of that mixture of traditional and green infrastructure to prevent some of the major catastrophes in the future from happening when you have that erosion along the shoreline. Congratulations. And on to Orleans County. Yates Town Park is going to receive two and a half million dollars for uh, for shoreline stabilization, public water access. Our parks are our uh, critical economic drivers, and if we can't bring people down to the waterfront, obviously that's a major economic problem. So congratulations to the town of uh, Yates. <laughs> the town of Carlton, Lakeshore Road, Route 97, two million dollars to, to address bluff erosion and degradation. You can see some of the projects, the renderings that we're talking about here, actually bringing the shoreline to a uh, more sustainable level, uh, leveling it out, and creating some uh, opportunities for natural vegetation to take place. <laughs> and of course, boating. Uh, the Point Breeze boat launch in the town of Carlton will receive $751,000. That's to recreate the boat launch so that it can be used during high water and low water, this is going to be a floating boat launch, uh, floating docks and slips. So congratulations. And the town of Carlton will be receiving $620,000. That's to address uh, some erosion issues and, and uh, certainly uh, to, pr to protect critical infrastructure and wastewater. Uh, and again, mixing that natural and traditional infrastructure along the shoreline. On the town of Kendall, Thompson Drive, uh, prone to flooding, and a the turnaround there at the end, $131,000 to stabilize that road, um, elevate it, and install natural uh, shoreline protections at that turnaround. That's really an important part of the, the local economy in that town. Congratulations. <laughs> and as the governor mentioned, this, this regional development, this regional dredging plan uh, for the entire coastline, if our harbors can't be accessed because of shallow water and, and sediment, the economy completely suffers. So this dredging plan uh, will be state, uh, state overseen, overseen and uh, will stretch all the way from where we are here in uh, uh, Niagara County all the way up to the St. Lawrence. So congratulations to all the counties that came up with this idea and we look forward to working with you on that. So it's my pleasure now to introduce Orleans County Chair, Lynn Johnson. Thank you. This is a happy face. We should all be happy in this room today. Thank you, Commissioner Sagos, and thank you all for joining us today. I especially want to thank Governor Cuomo for his dedication to our region after we experienced historic flooding on Lake Ontario this year and then in 2017. The governor clearly illustrated today that he understands the urgency of preserving and protecting our region's waterfront infrastructure as rising water levels continue to threaten our local economy and our livelihoods and our ecosystems. We have all seen firsthand the devastation that rising flood levels have had along our beautiful shoreline. Some say this is a once in a lifetime event, but the folks in this room who have spent countless hours and dollars rebuilding our communities know this is the new norm. And as climate change continues to be an existential threat that our communities, state and nation can no longer ignore, I could not be more proud to have a governor that is putting his words into action, preparing our community for generations to come. Thanks to the Ready Commission's work and Governor Cuomo's pers perseverance in getting this done, 
the most vulnerable areas along the Lake Ontario shorelines in Orleans and Niagara counties will be rebuilt, improved to withstand whatever Mother Nature has in store for us. So we're so glad to partner with Governor Cuomo and Commissioner Sagos, and we are excited to see the progress we will make thanks to the Ready Commission's work. So thank you again, Governor Cuomo, for your leadership and your continued support in our communities. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our program. Thank you for attending.